In this video, we would like to show you how to perform a self-test on the Primus family. To do so, you have to reboot the Primus. So if you want to perform a self-test and the Primus is still running, you have to turn off the device. In this case, the device is already off, so I have to start the device by pressing the on and off button. If you are familiar with the procedure, you of course can use this time for the visual inspection of the device. After the booting procedure, the checklist will appear on the screen. In case of a real severe emergency, you of course can skip the self-test by pressing the cancel test procedure so that you can serve your patient and when he's well and not in need of the primers anymore, you can do then the self-test again by rebooting the system. The screen will not appear if you cancel the self-test to show you this you don't have the opportunity to do the self-test again or to start the self-test procedure again. So now I have to turn the device on and off again to come to the self-test opportunity for the primers. After reboot, the checklist appear again on the screen. So first we should check if the gas supply is proper. Here in this case, we want to have at least O2 and medical air and the pressure here is in the range. N2O we don't use here in this case and we also don't have cylinders, so we see also no reading there. After the gas supply, we should check the O2 safety functionality. So first, by the checklist, check if the O2 flush functionality is working. So if we have our eyes on the manual breathing bag, we see the reaction in the back when we press the O2 flush button. Next, we would like to see if the safety O2 control functional is proper working. So when we use the O2 knob here, we should see a clear reaction as well in the handbag. The second O2 flow meter we should check is the one next to the device in case of an emergency or you might want to connect this with the handbag if you would like to use it. So have a look here if it's also working fine and properly. Next on the checklist, we find everything regarding the vapor. So first we should check if the vapor is safety in place. Then is the vapor set to zero? Is the fill level okay? And is the safety filler correctly locked? Next in line is of course the breathing circuit system. So very important to clarify here that the breathing circuit system is assembled correctly, especially in case you are using a reusable hose system. Here in place we have a disposable hose system and we still have to check if it's all assembled correctly and the inspiratory and the expiratory limb. And of course the handbag hose system is connected to the correct ports each. After that, we should have a look on the gas scavenging system. The gas scavenging system could be found on the back of the device. Here you can see clearly by the red indicator if it's correctly set to the correct flow rate. Here the red indicator should be between the two black lines on the flow tube. Next we ha should have a look on the solar line. So the solar line canister should be uh, correctly in place and of course we should check if the color indicator shows us that there might be not enough capacity for our no next case. So when this is the case, of course, we have to replace it. Next, we should check for the water trap. If there is any water in the water trap, we should empty it because here we have the time. Then is the sample line corrected con correctly to the water trap and to the lure connector on the filter or on the elbow? And both is correctly connected. So this is fine as well. Next on our checklist is the suction unit. The suction unit is very important on any anesthesia device, so you should never underestimate to check this system. So here we have our suction unit on the side, and we can clearly hear and feel the flow, and when we close the system, we also see the rising pressure on the manometer. So suction unit is working fine. 
next on the list is to check if the emergency resuscitator is present and functional. And yes, this is the case as well. So now the final steps of the preparation for the self-test. The APL valve is the APL valve set to spontaneously, we can put it into manual range and then we should set it to 30. Next, the white piece, if it's occluded correctly, also this is the case. And then we have to check again the sample line. We did this before during the breathing circuit check. The last thing on this list is to make sure that the safety or two flow control is closed and this is also the case here. After we went through the checklist for the self-test, we can now start the self-test. We can do so by pressing the start self-test button or by pressing the rotary knob. So when we do so, the device will now automatically go through the self-test. The progress bar here will show us how far it is in the process. And after roughly five minutes, it will be done and will show us the result of the self-test. After the self-test, the device will switch into standby mode, if the test was successful or not. So here we see indicated by the green color that our self-test was successful. To get more information about the last self-test, we simply have to press on the self-test results button. So now we see all the results or test results, measurement values from the self-test. To go back into the standby screen, we simply have to press the exit button.